As I travel to Western Dartmoor, I find myself in Merivale, best known for its former granite quarry and the nearby site of Bronze Age megalithic monuments. These two stone avenues running parallel to each other are the Merivale Stone Rows, which form part of a network of cairns and stone circles across the moors. The Southern Avenue is just over 263 metres long and has the remains of a barrow in the middle. The Northern Avenue is slightly shorter. Both avenues are only about one metre wide down the centre. To the south of the avenues is a large cyst which contained a flint scraper, a number of flint flakes and a whetstone for polishing metal items. The lid of the cyst was broken in two by a farmer sometime in the past who made a gatepost out of it. Good morning. Well, it's the last day of October today and it looks like it's going to be another lovely day. So I'm looking forward to spending another day exploring more of Dartmoor. And the walk I'm going to do starts here in Merivale. The hamlet of Merivale, which lies within the civil parish of Whitchurch, is situated at the crossing of the River Walkham on the B3357, midway between the towns of Princetown and Tavistock. There is an older disused bridge to the north of the modern road. The few buildings include houses built originally for the quarry workers and the Dartmoor Inn, which sells Merivale Ale. There was once also a Wesleyan chapel. The hamlet is dominated by the spoil tip from the former Merivale Granite Quarry, originally known as Tor Quarries, which closed in 1997. Right, I am now heading for that tour behind me, and that's called Vixen Tour. From the road, I headed straight across the open moor. Negotiating boulders and crossing a leet, I continued towards the prominent outline of the tour ahead. Before long, I found myself in front of Vixen Tor, which rises 120 feet from the moor, and the peak is 980 feet above sea level. It is a granite mass that appears to be made of rocks piled up on each other. The Tor is the highest freestanding rock on Dartmoor. From some angles, it is said to resemble the Sphinx. Others say it is a Vixen and yet others say it looks like an old man with a cap on his head and his back to his wife.
Unfortunately, I was unable to walk onto Vixen Tor, as it lies on private land. Since 2003, access by the public has been banned, causing protests and mass trespassing by hikers and climbers. According to a local legend, a witch once lived here amongst the rocks on Vixen Tor. And when the fog fell across the moor, she apparently would guide travellers through it on their way to safety, when in fact she actually deliberately created the mist and then would lure them into it and into a nearby bog into which she would actually delight in them being sucked down to their death. Turning right by a wall in front of Vixen Tall, I headed gently downhill. Keeping near the wall to my left, I soon crossed the stream on granite boulders. Curving right and heading uphill, I made my way through an area of gorse, rocks and stunted trees, to the left of Heckwood Tor. To the left were fine views over the Walkham Valley, and as the path bore right, I was approaching the next tour. Arriving at the next tour now, this is Pew Tour. Tor was locally known to be the residence of the King of the Piskis, and deep down below the dark outcrops lay his fabulous palace. It is said that on some nights you can hear the little folk as they dance and prance at their festivities deep down under the Tor. Somewhere amongst the cracks and joints lies the entrance to this magical palace, but as tradition goes no one has ever found it or really wanted to. Some believed Pewtor to have been one of Dartmoor's many druid temples. Several rock basins on the Tor were supposedly used in the druid's rituals, possibly as font-type basins. In 
In January 2005, a walker discovered seven dead sheep on the slopes of Pewtor that apparently were arranged in a seven-pointed pentagram. A post-mortem carried out by a local vet revealed that all the animals had their necks broken. There was also evidence that the sheep had been penned up just before their slaughter. This is just one of several unexplained animal deaths on Dartmoor, which has been recognised to either witchcraft rituals or alien activity. Well, I must say that Pew Tour does provide some really stunning views. Well, last night I spent a good chunk of the evening drying out my rucksack because, of course, on my walk yesterday I'd actually put my bottle of water inside but I hadn't put the lid on properly so it all leaked to the bottom of my rucksack. <laughs> so I had to turn it inside out last night and stick it above a radiator and leave it to dry. So it is dry now, but it'll teach me not to be sloppy anymore. <laughs> Before heading on, I stopped to look at the views offered from Pewtor. This included a superb panoramic view over Tavistock and across to Plymouth Sound. Pewtor was absolutely lovely. Well, it's onwards and downwards for me now. Keeping on downhill, I passed to the left of a disused quarry, then followed a grassy path that bore left and headed gently downhill. At the bottom, I went left to continue between gorse bushes, alongside a leet on the right. Where the leet ran parallel to a lane, I crossed the water. I then turned sharp right along the narrow lane, which headed towards Moortown. Where the lane bends sharply left, I turned right to follow a path gently uphill, keeping parallel to a wall on the left. After the wall turned away left, I continued straight ahead across moorland scattered with gorse. I could see Feather Tor a little way to my right. A reason I chose this walk today was because I wanted to follow a route that led me to locations that typify Dartmoor. Now obviously there are the Tors, but there's something else which I should be finding just ahead of me now, which I think really characterises Dartmoor. Thank you. 
Windy Post Cross lies northwest of Feather Tor to mark the route of the Abbot's Way across Whitchurch Common from Merivale Bridge to Moortown. The cross is 6 feet 8 inches tall and 2 feet 3 inches across the arms. The shaft is 11 and a half inches wide by 11 inches deep. Having seen many photographs of Dartmoor over the years, many of them featured crosses in the middle of bleak moorland, so I just assumed that that was one of Dartmoor's characteristics. So coming to Windy Post Cross today, for me, is a real thrill. This well-shaped granite cross, which is chamfered all round, is of a later period than most on the moor. William Crossing puts its age down to the 16th century and suggests that it may have been a replacement for a much older cross that once stood on this site. It is in good condition and unlike most crosses on the open moor, doesn't appear to have needed repair. The cross is currently tilted over at quite an angle to the west. This is probably more to do with livestock rubbing against it than the open position, as its name of Windy Post would suggest. The Grimstone and Sawtridge Leet, which is taken off the River Walkham about two and a half miles to the northeast, runs right past Windy Post Cross. Here the leet splits into two, in order that a branch can be used to supply water to some of the farms to the south, in the parish of Sanford Spiney. What another wonderful walk it's been. I love Dartmoor and I can't believe that when I was younger I never came to explore this area. What a stupid tosser I was. But at least now I can see the error of my ways and I can make up for lost time. Well today's walk has been fantastic. Another lovely day in Dartmoor and I've really enjoyed visiting Vixen Tor, Pew Tor and Windy Post Cross. That's the end of a fantastic day.